Okay, maybe at this point we could turn to the audience for another question. A quick question, please. Maybe someone from the back a little bit. Not, not too back. <laughs> from so you oppressed people at the back. <laughs> <laughs> Hi Jordan, uh, my question is what is the antidote towards toxic masculinity? Well, the, uh, the antidote is responsible masculinity. And, and what does responsible mean? It means, well, it, if you're responsible, then you're trying, to do, um, you're trying to do what's honest first. So you're careful with your speech and your actions. You're careful with your speech in that you don't say things that you know to be false and you're careful in your actions so that you don't have to lie about what you do. That's a good start. And then the next thing would be that you're capable of taking responsibility for yourself at least so that once you're an adult, no one else has to bend over backwards to ensure that you don't unduly suffer in the world. And so that's responsibility for yourself. And then if you get halfway good at that, well then, you know, you might think about taking on the responsibility of a family and contributing to your community and doing all those things in a harmonious manner. And that's obviously the antidote to toxic masculinity, which is not a phrase I would generally use. I just think about it as, you know, a, a, what would you call it? I think sinful behavior is a much more accurate representation personally, but it's honesty and and responsibility. And I do think about it as a, harm, a function of harmony. I got that a lot from reading Jean Piaget, whose work was a ex uh, psychological extension of Kant's c categorical imperative, because Kant believed that you should act in a manner such that if the way you acted became a universal, that that would be beneficial. And, but Piaget formalized that very nicely, showing that um, one of the basis for the emergence of, of a system of genuine ethics was a, uh, an iterable form of reciprocity so that, you know, so for example, oh, I can give you a quick example of that. My granddaughter, who's now 15 months old, has discovered a new game and it's, 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 it's a Piagetian game, um, a developmental game, and she, she discovered this by watching but also on her own and partly because it's a very deep part of human nature. So she has this little wooden spoon and her game is, you sit with her at the table and her game is, she gives you the spoon and then you take it and then you give it back and then she's all happy about that and then she gives the spoon to the, to the person who's sitting beside her and then they give it back to her and she's very happy about that and so it's, it's an amazing game because she's learned to give up something to, to let go of something that she wants and to trust someone else to return it to her and that's what she's playing with and then you can play with that game it's quite fun so you know and you have to pay careful attention to her and watch how she's manifesting her emotions and so maybe what you do is you take the spoon and you hide it under your hand that sort of disconcerts her a bit then you show it to her and pick it up and give it to her and she's happy about that because what she sees is that the principle of reciprocity can maintain itself across a set of transformations and that's really exciting to her or you can give her the spoon and she can give it back to you and then she can reach for it and you can pull it away a quarter of an inch and that sort of disconcerts her and then she'll Do you, you want to repeat oh, sorry, that? I'm sorry. Um, I said that didn't cover really a toxic ma masculinity, right? Because yes, it's no, dealing no, with the just, just, just dealing with the principle just, of reciprocity. No, you, you just said that you, you have to be honest and res respons uh, responsible for, as a man. Right? Well, put it this way: when I'm giving the spoon back to my granddaughter, I'm not engaging in toxic masculinity. And that was the point that I was trying to make: is that and this deep reciprocity and trust is part of the social contract. And it is precisely the antidote to what precisely, it, since we're going to pursue this, what precisely is toxic masculinity? As opposed to, say, toxic femininity or toxic humanity. What exactly are you asking me about? I really want to know what, what you like, uh, how you would s describe to toxic masculinity. Because no, I want you to define what to toxic masculinity constitutes. Since we're going to define things so carefully, let's do it. Uh, well, I think okay, guys, sorry, but we really have to move on. So there will be more <laughs> questions <laughs> later on. <laughs> there will be a lot of opportunity. No, to but ask maybe questions. let's, if, if you, if you. <laughs> okay, so let's define it shortly. All right, shortly, please. <laughs> Okay, um, 
I think that's the, the moment when you kind of, um, I, I, I have a hard time to kind of describe it in English. Um, let's say, uh, gosh, um, that you kind of um, go over a boundary that kind of uh, neglect, neglects the freedom of the opposite, well, gender or whatsoever. So that's, that's mas toxic masculinity and that you kind of have But that would also be toxic femininity. Well, can, may, may I like finish my sentence sure. please? Sure. Thank you. Um, and then also, um, you, I lost my sentence now. But, um, no, 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 I will be back. I'm back, I'm back. <laughs> but more in the sense that yeah, can someone help me here in the audience? Okay, so let, before, before we move on, let me point something out, you know, that I was willing to, to undertake this uh, line of discussion, allowing for the possibility that the category of toxic masculinity had some content, right? But if we're, if we're going to pursue that line of reasoning and quibble about the answer, then we're certainly going to quibble about the definition that's embedded in the question. And so part of what's happened in our discourse is that we're required ethically to assume a priori merely out of politeness that the utterance toxic masculinity actually constitutes a meaningful phrase. And if you push it, you find very rapidly that it doesn't because it's very, very, very difficult to define and definitions actually matter. And so if it's a matter of transgressing against the boundaries of gender appropriate behavior, well, first of all, that indicates that there's something universal and normative about gender appropriate behavior, which is something that people who push the idea of toxic masculinity generally tend not to presume. And second, it's just as likely to happen among women as among men, in which case it's not toxic masculinity. So maybe on to the next question. Okay.